Joseph Kahn's Power Rangers, dark and violent R-rated reimagining will leave you in shock. Explored. Joseph Kahn's Power Rangers was taken off streaming platforms Vimeo and YouTube soon after its release. Any guesses as to why that happened? Well, as the title of this video suggests, it was way too dark, violent and cynical for a Power Rangers short. I mean, it literally illustrated unfiltered content like the Black Ranger sleeping with many women and using illegal narcotics, mm. coke, only to spill the brains of some bad guys later. Soon after being pulled off the internet, Power Rangers fans and the entire internet community erupted in expressing their disapproval. Some even screamed their guts out. The outcry was so strong that it could even be called a micro-revolution of sorts. Even Saban had to back down and allow the film back online, but Khan didn't make the short film to piss people off or to get producers to offer him a fortune for a full-length feature. His sole intent was to put forth his own vision of Power Rangers. In fact, in an interview, he mentioned that as a short, Power Rangers could be portrayed as dark and gritty. But as a full-length film, it should remain within the boundaries of socially accepted norms. Without further ado, let's deep dive into this beautiful yet controversial short by Joseph Kahn, produced by Adi Shankar. Before we begin with Joseph Kahn's Power Rangers, let us quickly recap who these superheroes are, their arch enemies, and what powers do the Rangers possess. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Who are you? It all begins in an empire of intergalactic robotic beings who capture innumerable worlds throughout their existence. Eventually, these beings or the machine empire reach planet Earth with hopes of conquering our world. However, they encounter a foe that wasn't just capable of crushing their forces that were led by robot monsters, but could also rebel against the machine empire. These formidable earthly heroes were known as the Power Rangers. The heroes were regular school kids who were gifted each with a unique superpower. When the powers of the rangers' dinosaurs combined, they gave rise to an ultimate being named Megazord. One thing to be kept in mind while discussing today's video is that this short is not entirely a reboot of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but a recreation of sorts. Joseph Kahn's Power Rangers fight the Machine Empire after stepping foot on Earth. The ruthless mechanical aliens defeat the mighty Power Rangers in a fierce battle. The cinematic experience of the battle sequences is nothing short of a fantastic action film with impressive weaponry and even more grand explosions. Unfortunately, it is pretty short-lived. To save the planet from the wrath of the Machine Empire, Earth's government sign a peace treaty with the aliens. The Power Rangers are disbanded under a clause of this treaty. Naturally, this meant that our heroes had to now find other sources of livelihood. While some went on to become television stars, the others joined the Machine Empire itself. Many years later, the second Red Ranger Rocky defects to the Machine Empire. Rocky DeSantos used to be a mighty hero who wielded the buzz of a T-Rex when he transformed. He used to pilot the Red Shogun Zord, the Ape Ninja Zord, and the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. Rocky was always optimistic about life, cheerful and good-humoured without much inclination towards treachery. So why does Joseph Kahn make his character give in to the enemy, you ask? Well, we see that Rocky was extremely critical of the fact that Zordon shaped juvenile soldiers. Which brings us to the question, who was Zordon? He was the mentor to our rangers and the one who gave the rangers their powers. He used to be a human once, but had now morphed into a floating head in a tube of energy since he was trapped in a time warp. Zordon was the one who had defeated evil forces approximately 10,000 years ago and banished them onto the moon. Coming back to our plot, Rocky simply loathed Zordon's use of children in a fight that they didn't really understand, against an enemy they hadn't even met. Nevertheless, Rocky on switching over to the Machine Empire side gets himself a prosthetic leg and was now on the lookout for his team members. Another reason behind Rocky's change of heart was that he didn't want to be on the losing side. I made sure I was on the winning side. From the moment the Machine Empire integrated their technology with the Earth's, he believed that their fight for freedom was a lost cause. Rocky was unimpressed by the strategy of arming children in a fight against an alien race so strong that it had taken over thousands of worlds, while the adults sat tight in their offices holding high political posts. He brings in the former Pink Ranger, Kimberly, for interrogation. Bullshit is an ugly colour on you. 
Kimberly was one of the rangers who boasted the pink colour and wielded the mighty power bow. She brandished the Crane Ninja Zord, the Firebird Thunder Zord, and the Pterodactyl Dinosaurd. Anyhow, Rocky cross-examines her about the former Green Ranger Tommy Oliver's current whereabouts. Tommy was the original Green Ranger and served as the main protagonist for much of Power Ranger history, but is also the Ranger who almost defeated the others under the control of the evil witch Rita Repulsa. Noticing that Kimberly was a tough nut to crack, Rocky turns to psychological torture by bringing up the other Ranger's fate, including that of her husband Jason, who was killed eight hours after their marriage. Jason was the first Red Ranger, but Bulk and Skull sold him out by revealing his location. He dies a gruesome and violent death with hundreds of bullets piercing his body. Joseph Kahn held no qualms about spilling blood on the screen while shooting Jason's death. Rocky then indulges in the details of the original Black Ranger's fate. Zack the Black Ranger was an action junkie and an exemplary martial arts enthusiast who loved leading a rich playboy's life. One may say that his life as a Power Ranger who landed power bows was downgraded on becoming a television persona, acting in shows like Hip Hop Kido. Forgetting his roots, he ended up as a muscle man for the Machine Empire. Money was not his primary focus. The X Ranger's insatiable hunger for action and adventure led him to volunteer himself as an enforcer to overcome any resistance that the Machine Empire faced. He even enters the den of the North Korean leader, General Clank. Zack shows off his magnificent moves to the North Koreans. The kicks, the punches, the brain splattering, and ugh, all that blood spilling. Joseph Kahn truly proves his mettle as an action film director in this particular fight sequence. To one's disappointment, Zack gets shot from behind and more blood is spilled. At this point, Rocky accuses Tommy of being responsible for the death of Kimberly's friends. He zeroes in on the fact that Rita had previously turned Tommy against the Rangers once, and was probably doing it again. He tells her that Tommy had paid a visit to the former Blue Ranger, Billy Cranston, who is now openly gay and the proud owner of Lockheed Martin. While the audience knows that Tommy didn't kill Billy, Rocky seems to suspect otherwise. Kimberly, however, has not lost faith in Tommy and defends him, denying his role in the killings of the former Rangers. When Rocky grills Kimberly further using physical force, she fesses up about last having seen Tommy at the funeral of their former Yellow Ranger, Trini. Trini had died during the peace treaty negotiations between the Machine Empire and the Earth. Rocky then reveals his wicked plan. He tells her that he was already aware of it and was simply using her as bait for Tommy. You, my dear, are bait. The next thing we know, Tommy arrives at the facility and slaughters the guards. He and Rocky then get into one of the most well choreographed one on one sword fights, followed by hand to hand combat, to have ever been seen in a short film. Both are equally formidable opponents, being masters of martial arts. However, just as Rocky begins to overpower Tommy, Kimberly somehow manages to break free and shoots Rocky in the head. But wait, Tommy is not pleased by his saviour, he asks Kimberly who she really is. She initially sticks to her given identity, but when questioned further, her left cheek begins to crack and crumble. It turns out that this Kimberly was actually Rita Repulsa in disguise who had killed the other rangers. As the facade fades, she once again tries to lure Tommy as he is the last one standing into being a part of her dream of world domination. However, Tommy knows better this time around and he attacks her and Joseph Kahn's Power Rangers comes to an end. Future of the Franchise If we are to go by the latest news, Hasbro and E1 are working on a new live-action Power Rangers project that is expected to release in the latter half of 2023. British director Jonathan Entwistle has signed the papers, taking up the reins of this new project. While the cast hasn't been finalised yet, there's a lot of new information like the presence of a female lead, a lot of new zords, and a time travel element to connect the film to shows like Power Rangers Dino Fury. As intriguing as the concept may sound, only time will tell whether this film succeeds. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe. I've killed them all.